Hey everyone, this is Alex from The Red Lemon Show, the second episode ever of all time. And bear with me tonight, I'm a little bit tired. I've had a long day's writing and making pretty pictures and trying to push out as much content as possible and generally stressing about life. So if I start to slur my words, do alert the authorities. Well, you don't have to do that. Just um, bear with me. It's not the grey goose. It's just me being a bit knackered. Right, so without further fanfare, let's jump straight into this episode. And I wanted to answer a question from a reader. Um... And that comes from Cena in London. He is a good friend of mine, actually. He's uh, one of my um, former neighbours in the place that I used to live in London, in East London. And he runs a illustration brand. He's a t-shirt designer as well. And it, it's called That Sparrow Boy. It's quite a spicy illustration brand, shall we say. I'll leave it at that. But uh, he's asked the question today, what are some good promotional strategies for a creative business? I think Cena is moving away from uh, doing more of a um, more of a full-time teaching job and he wants to do more with his illustration stuff and his products and I thought that this would be a good question to um, go fairly deep into and go quite quickly through all the different marketing ideas that I can think of and all the, all the marketing strategies that I have personally used first and foremost but then but then towards the end I, I may discuss some of my, the other ideas that I think are pretty awesome um, so again, the question, what are some good promotional strategies for a creative business? So this is quite a broad idea. And I think I, I chose this for a reason so that it, it gave me an excuse to go quite, to go quite broad with the answers. Cause this, this could, this could apply to people who want to get, um, clients and it can also apply to people who have a product to sell, um, you know, and, and as well as services to provide as well. So what I wanted to start with on this topic then was a, an umbrella strategy, so to speak. So I've, I'm going to split this, this, this answer into three pieces. So the first, the first is what I consider to be um, a useful strategy that is kind of overall when it comes to promoting a creative business, whether that be your client for, for clients and services or if it's for products that you're selling. So I call it the tripod of awareness. Okay, this is something that I coined very cleverly, uh, about two years ago. Not being sarcastic, by the way. You, you may have to bear in mind that as, as a Brit, I tend to sort of lapse into sarcasm here and there. So you, you, you'll have to get used to that and figure it out when, when it does happen. And sometimes it will creep up on you by surprise. Okay. So tripod of awareness is the three-legged structure that comprises, in my view, and from what I've experienced with the people that I've coached and stuff like that, um, the three legs of what it takes to make a good marketing setup for your creative business. So the first one, and this might come as a surprise to some of you, is being a creative maniac. Okay, The first leg of the promotional strategy that I advise people to use is to, be, is to, is to work yourself up into a motivated, energized, and productive creative person. Because that, first and foremost, if you don't have that, if you, if you haven't got energy in your creative business and you're not um, kind of working yourself into a sort of heat of passion for the work that you do and getting your stuff onto the paper without thinking about it too much and just producing, 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 then you will have fodder. Then you will have content that you can share in all the places that I'm about to mention. Um, and it also creates confidence. So this, if you are too reticent and too resistant to actually taking action, and you look at the blank page and you think, oh, I don't know, what kind of, what kind of idea needs to, needs, do I need to come up with that'll, that'll really work? You know, you, it's, it's more about thinking, how much can I put out today, given the time that I have, given my sanity, and putting down as much as you can, just, just, just churning that stuff out. I mean, it obviously will depend on what kind of work that you do. And if you have a, if you have client work, then it's going to be a bit more refined and a bit more, you know, focused. But, in general, you want to have that energy. You want to be thinking about your business and your strategy in terms of the energy you put into it. And you want to figure out at every point in the journey that you're taking how you can maintain high levels of energy for uh, your creative work. So you want to be full of ideas all the time. You want to be taking action. You want to be not sitting down and thinking about it, but actually doing stuff and creating creating content, whether that be client work, but also the juicy additional content that you will put out to grab the attention of various people around the web and around the world. So that's the first leg of my kind of umbrella strategy, the 
being a creative maniac, being a creative machine. You want to think of yourself as a bit of, of a machine. It sounds kind of, you know, soulless, but that is really going to set you apart from the from the tribe, from the rest. So, be a creative maniac. Maniac. Second, the second leg for me is building up a newsletter. Email is not dead by by any stretch of the imagination. It's still very powerful. It's still um, the number one for, for most people um, promotional tool available to to all kinds of businesses, creatives and otherwise, to bring uh, to to attract people to you and keep them kind of hooked to you over time, um, so that you can then, when the time is right, tell them about whatever you're promoting. Um, share with you that share share with them your products, and they will all be hooked to you through an email list list of some sort. Um, and then all you, what you'll have is you'll have various avenues, various additional um, sources of promotion that will bring people to your newsletter. So you've kind of got this satellite effect going on, where you have the newsletter as your kind of as your core marketing uh, hook, which will keep people attracted and hooked to you as subscribers over time and this is the this is the beauty of marketing this is the important uh, bit of marketing that we need to understand is that um, what you really want to be doing at its core is making people trust you more and more over time and become sort of more intimate with you and this and the email um, the email setup is the best way to do that or one of the better ways obviously there, there's video and there's all kinds of other forms of content that allow you to share yourself and your ideas and your vision and your content with people but the newsletter is that sort of central hub that allows all kinds of people to come together as one and follow you and follow your main uh this is this is where your 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 stuff will come out first in general so create an email newsletter this is this is key because this is something that you want to be promoting elsewhere so you have this central core and then you'll be promoting the newsletter in other places and um, I will go into some of those strategies in a bit more detail. Are you guys with me? Am I talking too quickly? I wish there was a two-way means of communication here because I'm basically just talking to my desk and uh, there's no one around. It's just me and a microphone. So do write whatever you got from this in the comments below and I will read it for the next episode. But we are now looking, we're looking at the umbrella approach to marketing and I have discussed being creatively productive, being a creative maniac, so to speak, as being the very first important piece. You need to figure out how to get your energy levels up and you need to be putting out a lot of content. This is great for self-confidence. It's great for having fodder, having material to, to give out and share and attract people to you. And then the second leg of the, um, the tripod of awareness is the email newsletter, the building of your email newsletter. So the, the more people you have as subscribers, the better. The more eyeballs you have on your on your work and your kind of central marketing hub. And you will do this through, you'll, you'll need to use an email um, marketing um, software program thingamajig. It could be something like MailChimp, it could be Aweber, it could be what I use, which is ActiveCampaign. Uh, insert affiliate link here. And you can use that software to allow people to opt in to add their email address on your website or wherever it is that you share that link and you can give them something in exchange for them signing up so something of value is usually very useful <clears throat> and a very good incentive to get people to to join themselves to that list so for the last five or six years I had a, an ebook on my redlemonclub.com blog that gave people a list of questions that they had to ask to get them more refined on what sort of um, what was it nine things you must ask in order to attract the best clients so so the questions you ask yourself to figure out where you need to be positioned to get the, the, the best kinds of clients that are suited to you so that was just an example of an ebook that I gave away in exchange for an email address but I mean the very the very fact that you're giving away interesting content could be enough to to sway people to, to join your list so Email list is for me the number one core marketing channel that you should all be building up no matter what kind of business you have. I know that there are often excuses and it seems as if email is dead and no one wants to receive newsletters and stuff. Don't don't buy into that. You need to get an email newsletter because um, you, this is this is something that you can own. You, you could have your material on, on all kinds of social networks, but these social networks can die. If you have an email list, you have something that you can own forever. You have people's emails. And it tends to be a much more intimate way of getting people to 
um, to respond to you. It's, it feels more intimate. It's funny how the context of um, the, the platform that you're using changes from platform to platform very much. The feel, the vibe associated with it changes very much. And email uh, compared to something, for example, like Pinterest or even YouTube is much more personal. People will tend to open and notice emails from people that they like. Uh, whereas if they saw a notification pop up on Pinterest, they would be less likely to, to click it. So email has value. Um, I'm aware that this is probably going to go on for a long time. If I'm going to be talking about all the marketing methods in the world, this could be a very long podcast. So some of you are either moaning or jumping for joy. Um, the third leg of the tripod of awareness. You with me, everyone? The third leg is... Oh, by the by the way, for the second leg, it's it's about combining the new the newsletter with all the other marketing ch uh, channels that you can use to build that newsletter list. Okay, so other social networks, any other marketing channel is kind of part of that second leg. Okay, you can choose what channels you want to use, and I'll introduce them a little bit later on. The third leg, <clears throat> this is where we get into your one to one connections. This is this is where we're talking about not just um, you sharing something to potentially millions of people on YouTube or you sharing an email newsletter to potentially thousands of people or you sharing a Pinterest post to thousands of people. This is about one-to-one -one connections. This is about developing r real friendships, real relationships with individuals. Now, this sounds like a very time-consuming method of marketing, but most of my most successful moments in my career, the things that have, the, the, the action that I've taken that has led to the biggest results has been the ones where it's been me reaching out to one person and and giving them something of value, asking them a question, showing my interest, you know, trying to improve their life, giving them a sense that I cared for them and wanted to develop a relationship in the first place. These things tend to take people by surprise. Not many people do this one-to-one -one marketing, but it has the most, it, I mean, and you tend to get a lot of rejections as well because it's, you know, it's quite um, slowly but surely, right? It's quite a slowly but surely um, method in that you might contact five people and get no response and then finally the sixth person uh, responds to you. But it's still worth it, you know? It's still worth it for that, for the for the results that, you know, even one connection can lead to. <clears throat> so the, the, that's the third leg of this tripod of awareness, this this um, overall structure that will define your marketing system. This, these are the three things you need to be thinking of. Don't worry about anything else. Your one-to-one -one network is is key and you want to be I don't know where, how much detail I want to go into this right now but but in, in a nutshell you want to be developing a a list of people a contact list <coughs> <coughs> sorry you want to be developing a contact list um, I suggest quite you know fairly small like 100 in, in one of my courses I suggest 150 strong it doesn't have to be that big of people that you, and, and and the list can evolve and change and, and people can be swapped in and out over time. But this is a list of people that you consider valuable to your business as well as your life. It can be your mom, it can be your cousin, it can be your dream client, it can be mentors that you wanna start working with, it can be your accountant, whoever it is that you consider valuable to your business. You wanna have a an eagle eye on every single one of those people in that tribe, so to speak. Um, when you start, pouring attention into individuals as opposed to getting on Twitter and, and saying, look at me, I'm amazing um, every every hour of the day. Your, um, this, the, there's this, the value you get from that is unparalleled anywhere else because you're doing what no one else does for a start, but you're also nurturing real human connections. And that has, that can have a very powerful effect when you, when you stick with it, when you're consistent with it, especially with the kinds of people, imagine what kinds of results can come from working on those one-to-one -one connections over time with really cool people, people that you would love to work with. <clears throat> I mean, it could take a, as much as a year for someone to finally respond to an email that you've been sending every week. But um, that's five minutes of your time that could lead to an enormous, an enormous opportunity. Um, in the same way that I managed to land, for example, a, a job with the Google Plus team, um, that, that came through a one-to-one -one connection with one of the designers working at uh, Microsoft Bing who then moved to Google and it was that sort of that kind of dynam dynamic of one-to-one -one friendship that led to that kind of opportunity and in the same way I'm sure that you have had many experiences or a few where you've developed a friendship with someone or you met someone at a conference and you kept that relationship going 
And that led to something really, really cool, whether it be whether it was an interview or you getting asked to do a talk somewhere or you getting a really cool job. These are things that don't have to be spontaneous in life. They can be forced, right? They can be done by you on purpose by reaching out to the people that you want to bring into your life. So those are the three the three legs of the tripod of awareness. And and if you can keep a a fairly and it's difficult to spin all these plates, of course, in, in the modern world where everything is so busy and there's just so many distractions and stuff like that keep your eye on being um an absolute nutcase creatively every day you will probably feel like you don't want to do any work then you've got to you've got to figure out a way to get your your energy levels up and start start pumping it out and one of the reasons i'm so knackered now and i'm losing my voice already is because i've i live that right so i i i'm rarely in the mood when i first start the day but i uh, i get myself into it I go to the gym and you know I treat myself like a bit of a creative athlete so I do a bit of gym stuff and then I go straight then I go into the writing and I I I'm getting better at this over time but it's really been helping my career in terms of the attention that I'm bringing to the Red Lemon Club brand I don't know if you've noticed but my content levels have gone up uh in direct correlation with the <laughs> um me being more more productive and that's that's come out of me um holding this um, creative machine philosophy uh, close to me <clears throat> and, and treating it with, with a certain level of respect. So I'm going to spend the rest of this podcast talking about some of the marketing channels and promotional strategies I have used personally, and I will tell you how they all went. And I will only be touching briefly on each of them because there are literally thousands of avenues and channels and ways and tricks and tips and methodologies that you can use to market yourself. Um, And especially since we're talking about both getting clients and selling products, this is inevitably going to be a bit of an endless cavern of information. But I will use this, as I said, this episode is more of a touching, just sort of touching on the idea, the, the, the concepts first. And then, and then if you guys have more specific questions about individual marketing channels, then, uh, let me know for, for future, future episodes. But what I want to talk about then is, so just to remind ourselves of the, the, the tripod of awareness, think, think of that. I I would write this down if you can. You've got three aspects to your promotional structure. So the being productive is the first thing that that gives you the juice, the confidence, and the and the um the output to enable you to actually use the stuff that you can then share to bring people back to you. Secondly, build a newsletter and then make use of all the available channels out there that suit you that you have the time to work on to bring people back um, to your newsletter, and then work on your one-to-one connections with people. So this is this is reaching out to two or three people every day or 10 or 20, however many you can stomach every day um, to work on that 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 valuable network of one-to-one people. That's that's going to be one of the biggest things that you can do to change um, your your setup and to and to really push your business forward. Those three are really key. So let's let's talk about some of the things that I have done in my 10, 12, 13 years as an illustrator and a blogger and a product seller and a book writer and um, what else have I been doing? Been giving talks and a bit of coaching as well. So obviously I mentioned the newsletter. I have had a newsletter since pretty much day one. When I was in my early twenties, I wanted to be like Tim Ferriss basically, and I and I decided to write a book that I wanted to sell for passive income. The book was called, and I've mentioned this in the previous episode, 10 Steps to Powerful Online Self-Promotion for Creatives. So very short title, very brief. Um, And that was a book that I realized I had no means to market. And I needed an an audience in order to make that passive income I was drooling over. So I decided to use, I mean, I read a book called How to Launch Your Ebook. And one of the things that they had mentioned, this is going back in, in time quite a way, uh, they mentioned setting up a blog, so I set up redlemonclub.com as a as a means to promote the book through writing articles, and it's still a very valuable and valid method of 
getting your content and your ideas out into the world. Lots of people still read blogs, not a, not at the level that they once did, perhaps. But I think with platforms like Medium, uh, that's pretty much the only one. Uh, with that platform, that is now starting to bring a bigger audience to to the written word. Although there are very many individual blogs that are still doing very well. Um, so writing writing a blog is still a useful way of getting your content out there. And if you're scared of getting in front of video, that could be a nice segue or a foray into that world of, of starting, of creating your content. You can use something like Tumblr as well if you're 16 years old. Uh, joking. You can do, I think, I, I don't really know what, who the audience is at the moment. I think it's it's younger girls. But if, if your audience sort of matches that, you might want to look into uh, starting a blog on on Tumblr, or, or at least transferring stuff over from from another blog, you can always sort of copy and paste a little bit. But uh, I use WordPress, and that was a great way for me to not only get content out, but also to sort of force me into getting into the habit of blogging, and and it made me think about all the different things that I could write about. The the key thing with all this is is really you need to figure out how you can establish yourself as an expert in something that people will respect you for. It can it can be the, the creative stuff itself. Um, it can be you just talking about the, the work process behind the work that you do and this will attract the client this will attract clients and it will attract fans who will then you know um, start following you in greater numbers and they will tell their friends about you and that kind of stuff, which could also lead to client work and sales of course but you could also become an expert in something that is related to the creative field that you're, you're that you're in um so for example if you are an illustrator um and you do uh, you do illustrated maps for example you could become an expert on um how to use how 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 cl- uh, companies can benefit from using illustrated maps in their marketing materials. You could become the go-to guy on on, um, sort of advising people on on why they should be using illustrated maps and diagrams and and you could go a little bit further than that if you want. And you could set up a blog about that and that is going to draw the attention of people in companies who who had never considered using maps and diagrams for their marketing materials. And you can of course take that blog and go straight with it to the the client that you want to talk to. Um, I could end up going into a lot of detail on each of these things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna really rush through them. So blogging is 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 something you can do, and, and again, you want to establish yourself as a as an expert in something, if you if you can. Um, but at the very least, just share use use these blogs as a means to share your stuff to start attracting attention, and then on the blog you would mention your newsletter. Um, and of course, you can use other social networks to promote the blog. What else have I done? I so Red Lemon Club has been a fairly successful blog. I mean, it hasn't got as much traffic as it once did because it's most mostly over at Medium now. But um, it's still uh, it's still my sort of central hub, and I use the blog as as a means to sort of um, I'm going to open a shop through there soon. So when you've got people coming to read my articles, they'll also hopefully notice some of the products on the in the sidebar and, and buy a few of the products and, and books as well. It's also been a great way to get me to create content and ideas for writing books, which I've then advertised through Amazon, Kindle, and places like that too. Um, I'm currently um, probably far too late setting up a presence on Instagram. You can follow me there at at, uh, at Red Lemon Club, surprisingly. And I have been adding lots of illustrated sort of motivational drawings and stuff like that. And I'm kind of annoyed that I didn't start earlier, but it's looking like the really the go-to place now for visual material in particular um, but also for anyone who's got any kind of content you can very creatively present that content through Instagram and build a following very very quickly through there and of course you can um, mention your newsletter and if you've got a book or something that you want to give away through your newsletter uh, or in exchange for your newsletter you can of course share through all of these networks and all these places that I'm mentioning. You can use Portfolio sites like Behance, Dribble, uh, gosh, I can't think of any others at the top of my head, but there are many places that accept your visual material as well as any other kind of uh, creative output that you can use as a sort of 
uh, second portfolio site away from your your main portfolio site, which you may associate with your blog or your main website. Uh, and I have I have had clients approach me through places like Behance and Dribble, and they have emailed me through the through the system. I've actually hired other creatives through those places as well myself, and having a fairly consistent uploading of your material through those places is is still still worth doing especially if you're in the creative world the creative uh fields and you also want to look into other websites that are popping up all the time that cater to that kind of thing and will take your art and through the fact that they have higher traffic levels running through their own sites uh, you want to take advantage of that and leap you know uh, leverage the the traffic that they have and um that you know every site will vary one from the next but they they some of them will offer um, maybe in exchange for a bit of money, a um, promotional service where they put your um, you, they put your name up, or they they'll even have job boards on some of these places. So the Behance has got a job boards a job board where you can apply for different creative jobs as well. But it all depends again on your product or service, and this is why this episode is is turning into a bit of a chaos because uh, there's just so many there's so many little pieces that I could talk about in much more depth. This is why I'm going to be jumping through stuff, so bear with me. But hopefully this gives you a nice sort of snapshot, very very wide lens view on on the creative uh, frontier, the marketing frontier for the creative um, world. So portfolio sites is a good one. There's also th- the, another site that pops to mind is Saatchi online so if you've got paintings for example you could use their site to promote your stuff and also sell your art through there Uh, one of the places that I first started out was a stock photography site and they I think have less clout than they once did although the, the the models are changing in terms of how they do business so it might be worth experimenting with some of those stock photography sites I was on iStock photo and I uploaded hundreds of pict- hundreds of illustrations, and that was the the, the kind of process, the, the funnel in a way that got me to develop my style early on, and I managed to make plenty of money through there. But it was interesting because there was a lot of traffic running through it, lots of designers, lots of potential clients running through that site, and seeing the hundreds of illustrations I'd, I'd uploaded, and they would hire me through the site as well. So that's something worth looking into if you've got the time and energy and the faith to put lots and lots of pieces into a, a stock system, whether that be photography or audio bytes or videos or uh, drone footage or illustrations, you can use stock, stock sites or, or, or similar creative marketplaces as well. Um, look into places where you can sell your art online as well. And don't be blind to the idea that you can also attract clients through sites like that as well. You don't necessarily have to be confined to um <clears throat> selling you know your work for peanuts on those sites they they are also very good they they act as very good traffic um you know catchment places they they will attract traffic um uh, which can consist of clients and and um customers as well um so obviously using i mean social networks we could go into a lot of depth with there are so many out there now and so many different methods and tactics and tricks you can use to make the most of each of those but you know twitter is still still valuable in its own way even though it's turned into a bit of a free-for-all of of craziness it's very loud it's very difficult to get your your voice heard on there but it's still worth being on all these places because you know why not they're free get your stuff Get as much of your stuff in different, you know, variations running through these these additional these additional networks. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, um, running a blank here, Snapchat, all all of these clever little networks that are being set up by these genius young billionaires are worth looking into to just keep keep the stream going and keep um, you know it's it's sort of like fishing if you're looking for clients and customers these places will cons- this is where these people are hanging out and it obviously depends on the market you're looking for but think about where your market might be hanging out and chatting and then using these places to share plenty of interesting useful content that they will find valuable and occasionally dropping in as Gary Vaynerchuk says with his jab 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 right hook uh, strategy which is to share lots and lots of content and then occasionally dropping in something that's a bit more promotional that is asking for a sale uh, these are these are the these are great places for that. It's also great. These are great networks 
for sharing, for example, the book that you use to incentivize people to come back to your newsletter. So these are great fishing grounds for you to pick up relevant people who will then ultimately join you as a subscriber on your newsletter, which is the ultimate gold, remember. So you're not really looking for Twitter followers so much as you're looking for people who will see your uh, link to the email newsletter. So you want to be building that newsletter first and foremost and using all these channels as your avenues, your um, flows of blood cells that bring back your ideal customers and followers and fans and clients. And they will probably all come together as one. And that's just the way you're going to do it. I mean, you could set up several newsletters and that could get very complicated. But always think of the newsletter as being the sort of final piece in the in the process. And again, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all these places are sources of people. And we're looking at big numbers here. If you look at the stats for social networks and social media, it's no laughing matter. This is where people tend to hang out these days and they're only going to get bigger and bigger. Some of them might die out. Some of them might continue to grow. I'm thinking Instagram and Facebook. And um, I think those are the two big ones that are certainly going to continue to grow that are worth looking into. Um, job boards I mentioned there are many places all over the place where you can um, get uh, be hired for freelance work so I've I've hired people on Fiverr F-I-V-E-R-R is, is a place where you can hire people to do very cheap work for you I mean it started out as being only five dollar priced jobs uh, but they've now since expanded on that so you can have people that will jump um, up the up the level through that that that's that could be a place to get your foot in the door uh, again not nothing to be smirked at especially if you're just starting out Fiverr and places like Upwork UPWORK are places where freelancers can get work even though you're you are you do tend to have to bid um, for fairly relatively low priced stuff you've got nine, 99 designs as well as a place to sort of uh, not a not a huge fan of the idea of um, you know putting in creative work that may not very well be used because people are bidding for it. But uh, these are great places to sort of get your your feet wet and and start um, nosing around in in the industry and seeing if you can get a bite. You might as well if you're if you're, certainly if you're starting out and you can also get some good deals uh, even uh, fairly fairly far along in your career as well. So worth looking into those kinds of job board sites for getting getting opportunities as well um <clears throat> those are those are the main things that i that i can recall off the top of my head that i have used uh to bring people back to my blog um to generate um more subscribers to my email list i use right now my i because obviously you can get carried away with how many different things you can use the three um promotional methods that I use really are good. it's the newsletter first and foremost obviously but for for social media we're talking medium for me I'm, I'm a keen writer and I'm getting better and better and I'm enjoying that that process so I, I write and and the response is getting quite good there and I've got a quite a big following building up on medium um, I'm on there as I am Alex Mathers if you want to check my writing out but Medium has been great for people who like to read, and it's because I'm I enjoy writing. It's it's the perfect platform for me to get my writing out there. And then what I'll do is I'll put a call to action at the bottom of all my articles that will then take people back to my to my newsletter. And I have grown my newsletter by thousands since joining joining Medium and sharing as many as many articles as consistently as I can. So Medium has been great for me. Instagram is starting to grow nicely for me. And I also have been, I've sold books. I mean, I write books and sell those. And in a way, they, they can be seen as pretty pretty useful marketing channels. But they're, they're also fantastic for giving you credibility as an expert. So if you, if you can, you know, set aside a couple of, a couple of months or whatever it is, how, however long it might take you to write a book would be a fantastic way to get your name out there because you can put books together very easily these days. Obviously, the writing process is a bit, a bit more challenging again i know that I'm, I'm talking really quickly but this is one of those episodes where i'm really trying to squeeze it all in so in future future episodes it shouldn't be this fast but writing books is great you can then throw it into something like amazon and you have a big search engine that's going to bring lots of people to to your book if you put the right keywords in and that kind of stuff so 
that's another one. Obviously, the one-to-one network building has been great for me as well. You know, just building up that list of people that you consider valuable and making sure that you just sort of keep in touch and ping people and try and keep consistent. I know it's difficult. And I know that you feel that sense of like, oh, I don't want to be rejected. I don't want someone to ignore me. I don't want to go. And also there's the worry that, you know, you're going to write an email to someone and they're not going to respond and it feels like a waste of time. But just keep doing it. See it as a numbers game and keep following up. Okay, I've covered quite a lot here. Let's 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 chat just to sort of close things off. Oh yeah, one other thing that I have used that uh, is worth mentioning, but I'm not a massive fan of, is paid lists. So you can get hold of these directories that people will charge you for, companies will charge you for, like file effects and bikini lists, agency access, create uh, the illustration directory or whatever it's called. You can buy lists i'm not sure they even still do them but you they, they have lists out there that they will sell to you that are divided into categories according to the types of clients that um are are named on those lists so apparently they have there are people who work for creative agencies and things that will submit or will give the email their email address to these companies who then who will then put them in a list that you um are charged for uh, but then you have access to a big list of emails that you can d- drop into a um, uh, an email sender piece of software like Direct Mailer or something, and you can send them all these emails. But it just seems it seems dodgy. You're kind of getting close to very dodgy ground with sending sending out thousands of emails, and I'm not even sure that, that that kind of stuff is done. But that has been a way for me to you know out of sending a thousand emails, I'll get like one job. So if you're really really desperate and they're still allowing you to do that, then it's something to look into. Um, but I think more so they're better really to get hold of the the postal addresses of people who you might want to send physical stuff to and physical the physical postal stuff is interesting because it's again it's one of those things that not that many people are doing and if you can get something like a book or a promotional set of postcards or something interesting that people can hold then you you've you set yourself apart from the crowd a bit Um, obviously it's going to be an added cost to, to send stuff physically but it's certainly worth looking into sending physical stuff in the post to the kinds of people that you think will be interested in your products and services um, I haven't done that personally I mean the, the closest I've got to that is is sending my is sending out my one of my books that I wrote in color as a sort of giveaway prize for people uh, plenty to think about so as I said let's close things off this is going to be quite a long episode but just to give you some ideas of other things that have been on my radar that I have thought are interesting and have either only dabbled in or have not tried at all. Um, Social media advertising looks really interesting because what you've got is companies like Facebook and stuff and as as sort of um, controversial as it all is, they have a lot of data on people and, and most of it is data that we have agreed, you know, we have agreed to share. So it's not, you know, black hat stuff but for example if you wanted to really get targeted with a product that you were selling and you wanted to target um, you know your early 20s females who live in Canada or live in a very specific town who like certain movies who also like certain hobbies all in one set of criteria you can do that on on things like Facebook ads and Instagram ads and Twitter ads uh, obviously, there's a payment involved, and you can um, say how much you want to spend for each ad, and you've got to figure out how much it's worth to spend until you get a sale. But if you have that kind of targeting, that's that's really gold. And social media has only very recently started opening up that avenue for people. So if you have a product that you want to sell, <clears throat> especially something a, a bit bigger ticket, so something that's over like twenty dollars, which would make the advertising worth doing. Uh, it would make paying for those clicks worth doing. Then, really, really recommended. I think from what I've seen, people have people have done very well with that. I haven't started yet, but it's something that I'm considering using for my new planner that I'm bringing out. <coughs> Book of Lift. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. It's coming out soon. It's probably going to be already out by the time you hear this. Uh, it's a productivity planner, and I'm very excited about bringing that out. So, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, looks like a really straightforward. I mean, it looks. I mean, I have actually, I have tried it, and and my ads were crappy, and I was only sort of doing a trial run, but it looks really exciting. I mean, you can specify the market right down to 
the finest details. You can choose exactly how much you want to pay. It's very easy to put the, put, put everything together and worth a try. Obviously, podcasts, videos, you know, vi- video logging and um, sharing stuff on on YouTube is 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 very big at the moment, and that's going to draw a lot of attention. If you can if you can put the time and energy into editing good videos and podcasts, um, that is is without a doubt going to bring a loyal audience to you over time, and that's a brilliant a brilliant thing. Uh, in in a way, you you can use your podcast or or videos on YouTube or wherever else as a sort of secondary email list where you have subscribers and you can occasionally share the products that you have there. And if you've got millions of followers, which is very uh, almost almost easy to do these days with the nature of the internet, these can become very very powerful channels um, to to sell stuff and and bring people to your brand and start you know, building trust with a lot of people. Uh, and obviously podcasting is something I've only just started trying and I'm, the fact that I'm doing it is testament to the fact that I have faith in it. Uh, live, live videos, Facebook Live is really hot at the moment. You know, people are, people are very um, attentive to people doing things right there and then. So live stuff is interesting. If you're an artist doing like a live process of what you're drawing and stuff is tends to do very well. You can make use of Instagram for things like Instagram TV and Inst- well that's not live but you can do videos there uh, there's a live uh, video thing on Instagram there's Instagram stories so you can really you can do kind of short form video logging through Instagram stories and bring people into your life that way it's, it's amazing how easy it is to or how many people are interested in, in, in following seemingly very mundane aspects of your life but if you can be creative uh, you can you can start hooking people in quite nicely to that. Again, you've got to think about your audience and what kinds of people tend to to watch that kind of stuff. But you'll be surprised at the, at the breadth of people that are interested in in all kinds of content. So with all this stuff that I'm talking about, clearly it's important to figure out what to cut out more than what to choose to do because you can get really carried away and overwhelmed like I have been on many occasions with the the sheer range of things that you could be getting busy with online especially um so you 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 I mean every so many things are free you may as well try your very best to use all the energy you have to get to get some kind of a flow of content through as many channels as you can you might as well because you never know what 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 extra eyeballs you might you might be attracting on certain platforms that you didn't even expect. So try and be on as much as you can, and then out of those out of that range, put your sort of eighty to ninety percent, I would say, of your focus and marketing time. Not 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 your whole day's time, but but the the time you allocate for marketing. Um, put about eighty to ninety percent in in two or three platforms of choice so as i said for me that's at the moment it's instagram medium and podcasting those are my three and that i mean even that is probably too too broad but uh what i tend to do is i write in the morning and then i can use that to feed into the article and then i can use that to define what my instagram motivational drawings are going to look like and then i can of course write a plan for the podcast as well although tonight's not really had much of a plan so that's plenty of material i think for for you know allowing to get stewed stew it into your head I and mean, you can tell i'm starting to flag a bit here i'm getting really tired um but i hope that was useful i mean there's 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 a ton of other stuff and if you have specific questions about individual platforms and we can then we can have a bit more of a an in depth conversation on something a bit more refined and again I know that I have been going wild here with all the different marketing channels and ideas, but especially the first half of this podcast, I hope was useful for the tripod of awareness idea, this this um, idea to hold in your head. So if, you, if you're very confused about the idea of marketing, I would, I would just think of those three things, being productive, having a newsletter, and doing what you can to bring people to that newsletter. And thirdly, developing a strong um one to one a strong network of people that you would even consider friends and that would of course include clients and customers as well but that that close network is is key and then of course you have all these other channels that are, are, they're going to continue to spread and to expand and it's just going to going to be crazy but you've got to keep your head about you you've got to keep your wits about you and um 
figure out the platforms that are best suited to you, that best suit your personality. For me, video doesn't appeal that much. I don't think I'm particularly good on video, but but audio was something I always considered um, trying. And here I am. So I've got the audio thing going and the, the writing I'll, I'll always love. And I like to, to do illustrations as well. And that's always been a bit of a talent. So I, so I try and keep those illustrations going out through Instagram. And that, that all then ultimately leads back to my newsletter at redlemonclub.com, which incidentally you should be joining if you haven't. And that, that forms a sort of the, the backbone, the structure of my, of my marketing system for, for not only my client work, but all my products and stuff that I'm going to be selling through the shop. And that's, that's where we come full circle. If you've got any questions, let me know. Uh, give me as much feedback as you want. Be brutal. I want to, I want to know how I'm doing. I know that I'm talking too quickly, so I think I've got that one covered, but, um, I really hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you, you got a lot out of this and until next time, see you later.